Alright guys, welcome back. In this video we will calculate our sculpted debt repayment structure. So it's a pretty similar exercise to the one before and the first thing we can do is pick up our flags again and also our all-in interest rate and our commitment fee. So the first thing we will do here is pick up all those formulas here um, but we will not pick up our interest rate including commitment as we will calculate this a bit different here. So let's pick up all those cells here and paste them here. And then we can also link those into our inputs sheet. So our commitment period flag, we will also have in our input sheet under our sculpted debt repayment. So pick up this input from here, hit control R and for our tenor flag, we will have those inputs here in line 262. So pick up this cell here, control R, control D. And same goes for our all in interest rate. So we have this one here and I'll sculpt the debt repayment and also our commitment fee. Okay, hit enter. And then we can get all of those cells over to the right, control R. And our account here will be structured a bit differently. So as usual actually, so let's hit Alt HJ and this one is going to be empty. And then for our balance brought forward, we will refer to our balance carried forward. Also as usual, Alt HJ, that's a comma zero style. And then we will have the sum shift Alt equals, hit enter. Alt HJ, that's also a subtotal. And now this is special about our sculpted debt repayment structure. So our drawdowns, those will actually come from our sources of funds. So first we have to scroll up and go to our sources of funds. And here you can see our drawdowns. So from our input sheet, we know that we will have 50% of debt. So this is coming out of our input sheet. And those inputs here, later on will come out of our automated macro. So this macro we will model in our next lessons, but for now let's do the linkage already to our drawdowns here. So scroll back down and our drawdowns here come from our sources of funds. So let's scroll back up and link them here. So those are our debt drawdowns, hit enter. And our principal repayment will be calculated down here. So for now we can just get all those cells here over to the right, control R. And then we can also pick up a row sum here for those two rows here, control V. And we are good for our account here. So our debt interest, we will calculate a bit differently this time. So first we will have to figure out what our committed capital is at what point in time. And we will start this with our commitment period flag. So let's link this formula up to our commitment period flag. Multiply it by, open parentheses, the sum of our total drawdowns up here in our account. Hit a four once. So we want this cell to be completely anchored. Minus the sum of our actual drawdowns here. So we will select the cell next to our row total hit cologne and then you get the same cell twice and what we want is we want this first cell to be anchored that if we move this formula to the right then this will calculate our total sum so make sure that only the first cell here is anchored not the second one close parentheses twice hit enter alt hj that's a comma zero style let's get this over to the right control r and let's see if that worked so you can see if you hit F2, okay, here in our first quarter, we already have our commitment period started. So this is why this flag is on. So our total committed capital will be our future drawdowns. And then in our second quarter, we already have drawn 1.1 million. So we want our committed capital to decrease. So it's our 22.2 million minus 1.18 million. And you can see it drops. 
and in our last construction quarter we already have drawn all our debt so this is why we don't have any committed capital left and this is why we get a zero here then for our interest on our committed capital this is also a rather simple calculation so it's our committed capital times our commitment fee up here we don't need any anchoring hit enter alt hj let's have a comma zero style here and for our interest on our drawn capital we will have our balance brought forward out of our account multiplied by our all-in interest rate hit enter alt hj comma zero but what we'll have to do for our sculpted repayment structure is we will have to adjust this formula here a bit so what we've done for our linear repayment is taking the sum of our commitment fee and our all-in interest rate here this is where we got to 0.18% here and 0.45% here however this time we don't take this sum of those two cells here but we will still have to pay our interest on our already drawn debt here so what we'll have to do is adjust this formula a bit and let's get this here in parentheses so this flag in parentheses and we will add our commitment period flag here to it close parentheses so that this formula also is being activated during our actual commitment period hit enter get this formula over to the right control r and this ensures that we will also pay interest on our drawn capital during our commitment period if there has already been some capital drawn our total interest will be simply the sum of our interest on committed capital and our interest on drawn capital so hit enter alt hj that's a subtotal let's get everything over to the right control r and you can see everything is picked up properly and in our last construction quarter we will pay our interest on our drawn capital and our all-in interest rate will kick in and we will pay our interest rate on our balance brought forward so hit enter and down here you will be able to see what's so special about our sculpted debt repayment structure so when we do a sculpted repayments we first look what cash flow is available for our debt service so those are going to be our CFETs, CFETs standing for cash flow available for debt service. And before we can pull in the available cash flow for our debt service, we first have to calculate it in our cash flow statement. So let's scroll back up to our cash flow statement. And so far we reached our operating cash flow after all accounts. We haven't calculated our taxes yet, so this will be something for a later lesson. However, we can still already calculate our cash flow available for debt service. So let's pick those two cells up here, paste them here. And the formula for this one here is going to be simply, so we can delete all this. This one is going to be our operating cash flow after all accounts plus our taxes. So our taxes will be displayed negatively again later on. And for now we ignore our taxes and we can already set up all calculations that those taxes will flow into this calculation later on. So obviously we have to pay taxes to our government. So this is an actual cash flow which will not be available for our debt service. But after we have paid our taxes, then we can use the rest of our cash flow to generally pay back our debt service. And this is what we will do with using sculpt debt repayment structures. So first we pull in our CFETs from our cash flow statement. So let's make a simple linkage here. Pick up our CFETs, hit enter, get them over to the right, control R. And then for our debt repayment structure, only our CFETs during our actual repayment period will be relevant. So what we'll do here is multiply our CFETs by our repayment period flag. So this is where the repayment period flag comes in. Alt HJ, that's a comma zero style. Let's get everything over to the right, control R. We can also pick up some row totals here. So let's paste them here, here, and for those last three rows here. 
And down here, we will calculate our sculpted dead service target DCR. So what this essentially does is first we pick up our um, DCR target from our input sheet. So that's 1.3. And actually it's also pick up the style from here. So hit copy and alt H V S T enter. Let's change this to an off sheet item. And as a table heading, we can say target DSCR alt H J. That's a table style. And with this exercise, it should become very clear what a sculpted debt repayment structure is. So in our first repayment quarter, we will have 729,000 euros cash flow available at least. That's what we can forecast from nowadays perspective. However, obviously we also want some buffer, some security buffer here and our equity investors probably also want some cash flow. So what we simply do here is we say, okay, we have 729,000 euros of cash flow available, but we only want to pay a certain portion of this. And this is where our debt service coverage ratio comes in, into play. So if we have a debt service coverage ratio of 1.3, then we want that our debt service in this particular quarter will be covered 1.3 times by our actual available cash flow. So what we do here is we simply take our CFETs during repayment period, so our cash flow available for debt service, and divide it by our target DCR. And let's fully anchor this, so hit F4 once, Alt HJ, comma zero. Let's get this over to the right, Control R. And I think now it should become much clearer. So in our first quarter here, we have roughly 730,000 of cash flow available, but we will only use 560,000 euros as a debt service. So the cash flow thereafter will go to our equity investors. And if you multiply those 560 times 1.3, then you get back to our 729,000. So essentially our cash flow available for debt service covers 1.3 times our actual debt service. So let's delete this one again here. And then obviously our debt service consists not only of principal repayment, but also interest. So to figure out how much principal we can actually repay, we first have to subtract our interest. So let's have a minus here and pick up our total calculated interest up here, hit enter. Let's get this over to the right, control R. And here we can take the sum again. So hit shift, alt equals, enter, alt HJ, that's a subtotal. Let's get this one over to the right, control R. And then you can see that in our first quarter, we will have 729,000 euros of cash flow available for debt service. We only want 560,000 to be our actual debt service. There of 110,000 euros will be our interest expense, which leaves us with 451,000 euros of principal repayment, which we can repay at our target DCR. Okay, and then last thing we can do is link in our principal repayment up here into our account. And what we'll use here is a minimum function. So minus minimum, and we don't want more to be repaid than we have actually drawn down. So first thing we will select is our balance brought forward. And our second number is our allowable principal repayment during our target DCR period here, down here. So hit enter. Let's get this over to the right, control R. Let's go back. And we will have to fix a little mistake here. So right now we wrongly capitalize our interest expense during our construction and grace period. So what we want down here is we only want to subtract our interest repayments during our repayment period. So what we'll have to do is multiply this interest expense by our repayment period flag up here. So hit enter, get this over to the right, control R. And now you can see that our principal repayment in our account will only start during our repayment period. And our debt interest expense during our construction period, we will take care of in our SPB cash reserve account. So we will do this linkage in a later lesson. 
But for now, we are done modeling our sculpted debt repayment structure. And in the next lesson, we will actually apply those two structures and link them into our financial statements. All right, guys, see you then.